Um, as you guys see, Replenish 509, we welcome everyone to speak the language they're most comfortable in. Mm. Yeah. Um, if there are ever any questions, always feel free on the Zoom chat, um, post your questions or you want some follow-up, some, some clarification, um, do not hesitate to do so uh, via Zoom chat. All right, so now to get the conversations going, um, Christian, I'm gonna ask you to put the link on the Zoom board again, um, so that a while our speakers are, are speaking, we can all play our part and capture those gems that we know that they'll be dropping. Okay, so I am going to spotlight, not really myself, but Alan B who will be sharing um, his, his thoughts with us this morning. Yeah. Okay. And Chef Ron, um, who's having some technical difficulties. So we might not be able to see his face, but we will definitely hear his voice. Um, voila, there's, there's Chef Ron. Um, so he's, he's on board, he's connected. So je vais passer la parole à Alain B. Alain B, who was who put some effort into presenting in English. <laughs> Definitely appreciate that. Um, so Alain B, you have your five to, to seven minutes um, to share your thoughts. Mm. And um, when you hear some music popping through, that's your cue. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Eugene. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you especially to Republic 509 for inviting me to this panel discussion. I'm very happy today to talk about culture and more specifically cultural economy. My, my presentation will be on the fundamental question to me. Is culture our greatest asset for us in Haiti? And if so, all to define a successful cultural economy. I'm going to rely on two major uh, sectors of culture to try to understand these questions, performing arts and visual arts. The two sectors presented are, in my opinion, the most dynamic one. That even though international and national standards give Haiti the reputation of culture as our greatest asset. But is the economy around these two major sectors performing well? This is a great question. Take, for example, the case of the performing arts sector. Did you know when Haiti was Saint Domingue? until 1804 during the French colonial rule, an entire economy was organized around the performing arts. The French colonists at the time brought in actors, puppeters, jugglers, musicians, and singers with the aim not only to entertain the white colons who had the plantations, but also to make money in the field to live to live entertainment. There were the plantations, but also to make money, but there were performance not only in Cape Francais, Cap Haitien, but in other towns such as Petit Guave, Lecaille, Jacmel, Port-au-Prince, etc. And to be able to explore these shows, they built theaters in the cities in order to make their investment profitable. After the independence in 1804, in the Northern Kingdom, Henri Christophe also brought in singers, musicians, actors for the same purpose of entertaining, but also teaching black people who were now free or to jungle and play theater and other activities in the performing arts sector. The idea was to organize shows through, throughout the Northern Kingdom and create an economy around by creating careers and activities. Throughout the 19th century, pardon, individuals as well as the state created performance halls in the main cities in Haiti. The expansion of the board de mayor in the 1940 to prepare for the bicentennial anniversary of the city of Port-au-Prince include the Théâtre de Verdure, where famous opera singer Marie Marianne Anderson sang. The French Institute, created in the same momentum, invited many famous French actors, musicians, and two in the Alliance Francaise all of the country. 
local writers, such as Felix Maurice Oleroy, started adapting classical plays such as Antigone in Creole. This continued during the other decades contributed by tourist boom, then stroke traveler abroad to promote Asian folklore and music. But the Duvalier dictatorship sent many writers, screenwriters, and actors into exile or silence. Even a famous writer, as Franck Etienne, who's played Pelintet in Creole, played for several weeks at, at the Rex Theatre in Port-au-Prince, was forced to shut down to the mounting enthusiasm and potential tweet as seen by the government. This return to the past allow, allows us to see how dynamic the sector of culture was and gave Haiti an international influence and more specifically in Europe in the Caribbean, which could lead us to conclude that culture is an asset, but it's also shows how fragile and dependent the sector can be. For the visual arts, it happened a little, a little later in the 1940s with the creation of the Centre d'Or by the American writer colorist David Peters. This institution will contribute to the emergence of Asian art internationally. A mythical institution who plays a major role in the history of Asian art. In 1943, David Peters, founder of the Centre d'Or, landed in Haiti not as an artist, but to teach English. He was immediately charmed by Asian creativity and linked up with Asian intellectuals to create the Centre d'Or. Since then, artists have been fuckling and autodidact very quickly occupy a place of choice in this institution. Many of them achieved international fame. Hector Hippolyte, Philomé Aubin, Georges Lyoto, Rico Benoit entered important collections in major American museums. In 1945, André Breton, founder of the French Surrealist Movement, visited Haiti with Wilfred Olam, major Cuban artist. They both bought works by Hector Hippolyte, and Breton désolé praised the Surrealists from the topic. Le Centre d'Or attracted the attention of pot potentials and art collectors around the world. René Darnoncourt, director of Museum of Modern Art of New York, MoMA, traveled to Haiti and purchased works from the Centre d'Or for the museum. His friend, the millionaire, philanthropist, and future vice president Nelson Rockefeller does the same. The Cuban critic Jose Gomez Secret discovers at the Centre d'Or the works of popular painters and creates with their works the first exhibit of Asian paintings in Cuba. Thanks to the Centre d'Or, the so-called naive Asian art enjoys international notoriety and the Centre d'Or becomes an ambassador of Asian culture, an important player in economic development. This earned its recognition of public utility in 1947. If we talk about Asian culture internationally, the two sectors mentioned in my speech have played an important role. Music, dance, theater, and visual arts have provided a positive narrative and Asian culture, and Asian culture is a benchmark for its originality. And from this, we can conclude that is an asset. There's no doubt about it. But the question is all, oh, are these two sectors doing today, since the anecdote presented here refer to the past? The instability experiences by Haiti for the past 30 years does not promote economic growth in the two sectors, and therefore does not allow for a successful economy. The lack of cultural infrastructure, theaters, concert art, art museum, gallery, does not allow for a successful cultural economy either. For there to be, a, to be economic development in the cultural sector, we need to move away from small subsidies, which today help players in these sectors to stay alive, and move on to major investments. That's not the case today. And without investment, there can be no economic growth. Another important aspect, aspect is to be able to measure what the cultural sector contributes to the national economy. And if we go back to the case of arts of performing, more specifically in the music sector, what we can observe, 
we see that the majority of musical groups no longer visit in Haiti and therefore do not pay taxes in the country. And if we have to talk about economics of culture, we must immediately think about the taxation of culture with more than 80% of musical groups and musical artists living abroad. We cannot say that Asian music impacts the national economy. And especially when we know the problem of copyrights that these artists suffer. And it is also the same for the visual arts whose art market is almost non-existent in Haiti. So the little money does in this, in this sector does not allow it to impact the national economy. This sector also suffers from copyright infringement. To conclude, I would say that culture can, can be an asset for the country, but in addition to investment, it must be part of a clear development policy. And this policy must be defined by the regulatory, which is the Minister of Culture, which is not the case today. We can make culture an asset and create an entire economic around it. But this will require one, more investment, two, the professionalization of the different sectors of Asian culture, three, develop observation tools, cultural observatory, facilitate public-private partnership, and include the profession of artists in the labor code. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Alan B. Um, Vladimir, I think you just set the, set the scene for you as well <laughs> in terms of the needed public policies um, in order to support this structure and the importance of it. Um, thank you so, so very much, Alain B. Um, that was very, very insightful. I'm going to pass it on to our your co-panelists, um, Ron Duprat, to, to complement and give additional insights to what Alain B just stated, um, but looking also how the creative industries can capitalize not only within the sector and not only within the country, but looking at uh, un peu transversal in terms of location, so international aspects of it and even tapping into other industries to make sure it's it's sustainable and revenue generating. Okay, so Ron, I'm passing over the mic to you and then we'll do the Q&A for the entire audience afterwards. Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody can hear me. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we hear you well. Oh, perfect, perfect. Again, I'm so excited to be with you guys this morning. For me, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, something I will cherish for the rest of my life. As a kid growing up in Haiti, uh, for me to have the opportunity to carry Haiti, doesn't matter where I go, to talk about Haitian cuisine. Um, when people said, well, Haitian cuisine, it's a Caribbean cuisine, but for me, I always put the Haitian culture in the forefront. Are we moving fast enough to help Haiti in the culture side, where there's food, music, um, theater, arts, whatever it is? I think, I just don't think we are moving fast enough. Again, thank you for this opportunity to share my life as a chef, as a kid growing up in Haiti. I uh, went to the best culinary school in the world to be able to to share my passion. Uh, some people think it's a job, for me it's my life, to be able to reach out to young chefs. Uh, I was talking to Regine before, I said, before I got on Top Chef, most of our Haitian chefs today was Haitian, was Bahamian, was Jamaican, was everything but not Haitian. But after I went on Top Chef, there were so many Haitian chefs. I think this is something I would take to my grave because I wasn't afraid enough to say I was Haitian. So let's talk about the Haitian culture. When we say Creole, where there's New Orleans, uh, where there's St. Lucia, wherever I go, for me personally, how can we match the Haitian culture? How can we have growth to help Haiti move better? Are we moving fast enough not only everyone on this panel, the 59 people, 
how can we take the 11 million people with us to talk about culture, to put culture in the forefront? Everybody in Haiti heard of Karel. Karel can talk about uh, everything, whether it's food, whether he travel all the way to go to uh, go, go, go to the restaurant or travel the world to talk about food, whether it's rum, whatever it is. It will take more than 59 people to share the light in Haitian culture. I think it has to be a collective effort of all of us. Not only if you take, see a tourist pay ticket hotel to go to France to have good food or to go to Italy to have pasta, what, what can we do? What is the missing piece where Haiti cannot support itself in the tourism sector? Let's look at our neighbor, the Dominican Republic, what they're doing. Why can't we do the same? Jamaica, Bahamas, Turk and Caicos, everyone else. Why can't we use that platform to help Haiti in the forefront to talk about Haitian culture? Are we moving fast enough? As I said before, I don't think 59 people can change it, but if it, every one of the 10 million people became ambassador of the culture of Haiti, guess what? We will never have problem. We will never depend on anyone else. Everyone will have a sustainable job where everybody earning pay and life will be better. For me as a chef, as a kid growing up in Haiti, whether I'm cooking for a diplomat, doesn't matter who it is, I am who I am because I'm Haitian. I think I'm getting paid more because I'm Haitian. And I think the Haitian culture helped me. But how can I take that to a trickle down to help the Haitian economy, to talk about Haitian culture, to get everyone on board? Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Are, are you still there? I just want to make sure that Yes, I am. Okay. I am. So I was um, going to my notes. Uh, I think this is one of the few things I can say that feels so good. Thank you, Regine. I think there should be more people like you to help move Haiti forward. Uh, uh, the positive measures, the replenish. What can we all do? As I said, 59 people cannot change the landscape in Haiti. But if we talk to 10 million Haitians, and they all become ambassador. Let's go visit Haiti. Let's go visit Le Cap, uh, Cape Haitians. So the stuff is under our control, but what can we con control? We can do that. We can invite people to Haiti. We can uh, put Haiti in the forefront. I think that's the best message I have. Yeah, man, good, yeah. I, I like that. So we have uh, a potential, let's say we have, um, a, un, a, a positioning where all of us as Haitians can and ser should serve to change the narrative on Haiti so that uh, no matter what the industry is, we can um, serve that purpose because it, it is a major blocker. Um, and with all of our expertise, our skills, we have opportunities to have a more positive narrative on Haiti and enable more people to capitalize on that. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate that a lot. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to share the mural board on my screen now. We started capturing gems. Um, Christian is going to reshare the link just in case um, people logged in after the link was shared last time. 